The Vikings are in the mix as one of the top teams in the NFC. So who's their biggest threat on their path to the top? Plus, around the NFL with our What Does It Mean segment. It's all coming up next on Superior Sports Talk. Carol 11 sports anchor Reggie Wilson covers the Twin City sports scene nonstop. Luke Inman is ready to put him on the hot seat. That's what you're going to do to me. Instant analysis. Yanked. Out you go. Post-game breakdowns and red-hot takes. The Timberwolves need a stitch. Reggie and Luke give you a daily dose of Minnesota sports with superior sports talk. Part of Locked On Sports Minnesota. And it starts now. Back in the lab, Reggie and Luke back at it. Another episode, Superior Sports Talk, presented by Locked On Sports Minnesota. It's your daily 30-minute breakdown of everything Minnesota sports, which you can now find streaming on your Roku or Amazon Fire Stick devices. Look out for our Locked On Sports Minnesota app there as well. That's Reggie Wilson on Twitter, at Reggie Wilson TV, and on CARE 11. Wednesday, Reg, hump day. How we feeling? Feeling good, man. Got a few more days before... The football starts, got a week before Wolves start, wild up tomorrow. It's a great time of the year. Yeah, lots to get into, but first, remember, follow along on the Lockdown Minnesota YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, and leave us a comment. And on Twitter, give us a follow, at Lockdown M-I-N. And remember, we're a podcast, too, free and available, all platforms, Spotify, Apple, you name it, we got it. Tons of great choices over there. You got the Ron Johnson Show, you got the Football Party, and more. Your one-stop shop with endless Vikings talk with local experts. Do us a favor, smash that subscribe button, and drop us a five-star review. Speaking of YouTube... I'm posting a new poll up on the Lockdown Minnesota YouTube community page. Yesterday, I posed the question, which team outside of the Eagles, right? Because the Eagles are the obvious 5-0 and team, number one in all the power rankings. Which team outside the Eagles posed the biggest threat to the Vikings in the NFC as it stands today through five weeks? Here were your options. New York Giants, Dallas Cowboys, the Niners, the Bucks or the Packers. Here were the results here, Reg. Giants dead last, only 3%. Nobody's scared of the Giants right now. In fourth place was the Green Bay Packers with 11%. Third place, Tampa Bay Bucks with 19%. Second place, Dallas Cowboys with 24%. And the number one team outside the Eagles that scares Vikings fans the most, the San Francisco 49ers, 42% of the votes. Reg, we went over this NFC a little bit yesterday when we went through the power rankings. Were you surprised by any of those voting numbers or rankings? No, I, I think maybe for Vikings fans, I think if the Packers would have been higher, but I mm-hmm. think because the Vikings own a win over them already this season and they just don't look like they're clicking all the way right now. I think that's probably what is influencing uh, Vikings fans to say, oh, yeah, we're not really afraid of them. But honestly, you know, you look at this 49ers team, goodness gracious, man, they always seem to have the Rams number. But, I mean, Kyle Shanahan just has remarkable game plans cooked up against some of the best teams that they play. And if you're looking at their team from top to bottom on the defensive end, the offensive end, you know, you're like, who's running their football? Doesn't really matter. They get some production out of that. They got Debo and, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo's back there, the the best backup I think we've ever seen. (laughs) And so I think when you look at this team from top to bottom, you're like, wow, like, uh, you know, the defensive front led by Bosa, like the, this team is scary, man. And I think you, you look at them as a threat. They they could have gotten to the Super Bowl last year if they beat the Rams. Um, that was that was a little close. The Rams had to come back in that game to beat them to get there. And so I I understand. And then look, you got to put the goat on there. Anytime a team has Tom Brady, no matter how old he is or how frail he's looking or how many personal problems he has Antonio Brown trolling him on Twitter which I really don't know what that's about he opened up his home for him you know when he first got down there to Tampa and I guess they just fell out I don't know but anytime TB12 is on that list like you have to be afraid they're going to get healthier I heard they're playing the long game with Julio Jones if he's healthy when they need him most and you got Mike Evans you got Chris Godwin you got Lenny playoff Lenny And, you know, that defense shines when they need to. Like, I think they're going to be right there when it's all said and done. 
Yeah, Brady and the Bucks. they may have held on to beat the Falcons, but it wasn't pretty. They haven't came close to playing a complete four-quarter game once this year, but how many times have we seen Brady start out slow in his career? Every year, it seems like the guy's like two and two to start, and as bad as they've been to watch, they're still three and two. I mean, you mm-hmm. would think they're one and four right now. They're three and two, and in a week, weak division, probably the weakest division in the conference, honestly. Panthers just fired their head coach. Falcons aren't really a threat. Saints are the only team that has a shot, but they're even pretty banged up right now. Point is, you just know, no matter how they look now, Brady will heat up in the second half. They'll win the division. They'll go into the playoffs with like eight wins in a row. It's just how it works. I was surprised more people didn't have the Packers because for me, same philosophy. Rodgers typically sometimes starts out slow, heats up as the year goes on. They're trying to find their footing, but I get it. Vikes did already beat them, as you mentioned. 3-0 3-0 and in the division. They could own the tiebreaker over them if that's what it boils down to to win the division. Cowboys interest me, man. They're legit because you're starting to see just how good that defense is right now with Micah Parsons and Trevon Diggs and some other guys. Cooper Rush, he's gotten the spotlight, but the defense is why Rush was able to go 4-0 and in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And whether it's this week or next week, they'll get Dak back. And that division, you just hope they continue to kind of beat each other up right now. Giants and Eagles, those three teams collectively are 13 and two but having said all that yeah I'm with you and and the people man I'm a man of the people the Niners are legit (laughs) Nick Bosa he's dealing with a groin injury he may be out this week but when he's healthy him and Parsons are the top two pure pass rushers in the league and we all saw what that defensive line did to Kirk Cousins a few years ago in the playoffs as you like to say scary hours, Reg, man. It was Mm -hmm. not pretty out there in San Francisco on the West Coast for the Vikes. And offensively, once Trey Lance went down and how he looked that first week and early on, this whole Jimmy G thing, stepping back in, probably a huge blessing in disguise. Thank goodness they held on to him. Everybody was talking about where is he going to get traded to. Guy's been in the playoffs, deep in the playoffs, really multiple times, can run the shanty offense. He's got guys like Debo, Ayuk, George Kittle. It was the Rams' turn last year. Now it may be the Niners' turn this year. As it stands, Eagles and Niners are the best two teams in the NFC. And it's too early to guess how it's all going to shake out. Lots going to happen. But if all things are equal, everything's healthy, those are the top two teams screaming the crop with, for me, I got the Cowboys, Vikes, Bucks, and Packers in that second tier. Moving on, Reg, we went over the offensive defense, kind of the dream scenario they're living right now for the Vikes, which mm-hmm. is win close games while getting better every week as they get more comfortable with these new systems and new playbooks. But how about the special teams? Because they were red hot going into last week. They almost single-handedly won that game in London. Kind of laid an egg versus the Bears for the first time we've seen all year. Two field goals missed. Granted, they were long ones, 50-plus. But even outside of that, one shanked punt. Overall, just not the same coverage on punt and kick returns that we're used to. I say give them a free pass because all in all, Matt Daniels special teams has, they've helped you drastically win more games than they've helped you lose so far through five games. I'm giving them the get out of jail free card here. Thoughts on the special teams performance last week and if you're willing to give them a free pass as well. You know, Sam Ekstrom brought this up on Twitter and I told him, I said, look, we gave him too much praise. We were mm-hmm. talking we too much it. about him. Mm-hmm. Anytime you, you start talking too much about the special teams unit, is not is not going to go well. Deion Sanders used to say, whenever you show special teams, it's because of a big play or a boo-boo. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> that punt last week from Ryan Wright seemed to kind of turn the tide for the team, uh, for the Bears. And they really started to – it was like it gave them some life or something. They were like, oh, yeah, like we're a football team. We can do this. Okay. And they started battling right after that. You know, the, the kick – you expect a little bit more for uh, from Kane on returning kicks, and he really hasn't done a whole lot just yet this season. You know, we we talk so much about how well they have defended kick returns. Sunday wasn't their finest hour. You know, Greg Joseph wins special teams player of the week, goes five for five, and then all of a sudden, boom. First kick, not close. Second kick, blocked. It's just like, dang, we gave them a little too much praise. They got they they got a little too much praise. They start, you know, Patrick Peterson wearing the special teams hat in the locker room. People were like, hey, where can I get one of those hats? It's like, no, 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 don't speak on it. Don't speak on it. 
because you might have just messed up Jalen Rager. You know, he fumbled. Luckily, they got it back. But it's just like, goodness gracious, like nothing nothing seemed to, to be working in that last game. And I think they just need another – they need a quiet game, you know, a game where we're not talking too much about them so they could just kind of recalibrate and get back to the special teams unit that we have been used to seeing under Matt Daniels. You brought up primetime. 30 years ago this month, he goes out, plays cornerback for the Falcons, shuts down Dan Marino, hops on a jet, goes and plays in the World Series for the Braves that week, and batted 533 in the World Series. I'm getting off track. Let me get back on track. <laughs> so if it's not the special teams, what's the Achilles heel? You know, we've watched through five games that could get exposed further down the line once we get into, you know, the middle and late part of the season. Anytime you play this bend but don't break defense, I think that's one of the things that kind of scares you a little bit. You're like, okay, but how far is the bend? You know, I keep saying it, just it's super bendy these days. And it's like, at some point, does it snap in half? You know, we look at that Eagles game, the defense just got cooked. You know, these other games, they, they've they been bending, but they're they're not breaking and they're doing just enough so that they could win these games, you know? The Bears were threatening. Cam Dantzler snatched it from Amir Smith-Marset on Sunday. If that didn't happen, you're like, wow, how does that fit, you know, end up? Especially being that the Bears were driving. And you knew they needed a touchdown, so that was going to be tough. So maybe they would have gotten a stop another way. But it was a big sigh of relief, I feel like, when he snatched that ball from him because – the Bears were doing some things on that drive. And so I think if you look at the defensive unit, you know, the the soft shell coverage we continue to talk about, you play that type of coverage uh, in a few weeks against the Bills. Again, scary hours with Josh Allen. You saw what he did to that Steelers defense that was thought to be a better defense in this league. Mm -hmm. That defense is a little bit scary, especially when you talk about the the lack of, of pressure and the lack of getting home to the quarterback that the defensive ends are, are getting. Like, I think we expected a little bit more from the edge department from Zadarius and Daniil, and we're just like, okay, let's, let's come on with it. You know, they get a little bit more pressures. They get quarterbacks making mistakes, and that's when, you know, some takeovers can happen. But we're just not seeing it all together right now. The linebackers are playing well, but they're only one part of that unit, and they just kind of need to play a little bit more complete on that defensive end. Yeah, I'm with you. Got to be on the defensive side of the ball. Pass rush, run defense, all starts up front. Phillips and Tomlinson have been really solid, but who's the third guy? Like, is it Blacklock, mm -hmm. who they traded for from Houston? Is it James Lynch we've seen in there a lot? Is it Jonathan Bullard? Or is it another guy like uh, Asese, the fifth-round rookie from Minnesota? Is it the new guy, Tonga? They need somebody to step up and be the guy on that line for the long haul because teams will start to expose your weakness. And we knew going into the season that that third defensive line spot could be an issue. And then the pass rush, as you mentioned, they just got to get cooking, man. Donatel spoke to the media last week about Daniil Hunter. He said, this is normal. Switch into a 3-4 for him. This is what the first month and a half is supposed to look like. When Miami mm -hmm. made that switch, Jason Taylor's first month, he said, look like the same. He still ended up with close to 15 sacks by year's end. So Donatel's not worried. And again, that's based off him coaching players in the past that have made the exact same switch. You know the talent's in there. It's just a matter of him getting comfortable how long that takes. We'll have to wait and see. Vikes take on Miami this week, noon game. Keeping close tabs on the injury report for this one all week and the status of Tua for Sunday's contest because if he can't go, that means Skylar Thompson, the third stringer, would be the starter with Teddy Bridgewater now out as well. Plus, Dolphins were without their top two cornerbacks last week in Byron Jones and Xavier Howard. That's not getting talked about a ton. And when you think mm. about how the only two teams to slow down Justin Jefferson were teams with great number one cornerbacks like Darius Slay and Jeff Okuda, if either one of those guys were to miss this one, that could be a big factor in how the Vikes choose to attack and deploy J.J. in week six. Plenty more Vikes and NFL talk to get into. Next, we're going around the NFL with our Gimme One segment. But first... 
Vikes Super Bowl odds move to 14 to 1 after the win. Vikes current road favorites as Vegas has them favored by one. Make sure to keep tabs all week with Bet Online, betonline.net, the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games, stats, news, info. You want it, they got it. NFL, MLB, NBA, even MMA and UFC. Bet Online makes betting easy and is your number one source for all your betting needs. Go to betonline.net today to learn more. That's betonline.net. It's where the game starts. And remember, when you subscribe to Locked On Sports Minnesota, you're getting endless Vikings talk with local experts. Sam and Ron talk football every day in the Ron Johnson Show. Reggie Wilson gives you a sports anchor's perspective right here on Superior Sports Talk. And the Minnesota Football Party brings together the top Vikings podcasters in the city. Subscribe to the free Locked On Sports Minnesota podcast feed wherever you find your podcast. Drop us a five-star review or find our videos on the Locked On Sports Minnesota YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button and leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Find us streaming now on your Roku or Amazon Fire Stick devices as well. Look out for our Locked On Sports Minnesota app there. All right, time has come. Favorite segment, what does it mean? Let's just jump right into it. We're going around the NFL here today. First one up, what does it mean? With Matt Rule toast in Carolina, he just got canned mm. a few days ago. Teams are lining up as potential suitors in the chance the Panthers have a fire sale. What does it mean for Christian McCaffrey's chances of getting dealt? And which team would make the most sense to acquire the superstar running back? I just keep thinking about the Rams, Sean McVay having Cooper Cup and Christian McCaffrey. That would be unbelievable. Is there another team that kind of jumps out to you that could be a potential landing spot for McCaffrey? First off, if they get rid of Christian McCaffrey, what are they doing? He's like the biggest piece that they have on offense. They don't have a quarterback. You know, DJ Moore is a nice piece uh, in the receiver room, but he's the guy. I know that, you know, there's times where he's, he's having injury issues and you never know week to week, you know, how available he's going to be. But like, he's the guy, he's their offense. Why would they be trying to get rid of him? Like they should be trying to continue to pile people around him so that the rebuild is not very long. But that being said, if you look at what these teams do, I think, you know, you, you, you said the Rams, why not the 49ers? I think mm. they could really use a guy like oh. that. And Kyle Shanahan could really, you know, he's a very, very creative offensive mind. You look at what he did in Atlanta with a guy like Tevin Coleman, Devontae Freeman. Like, man, that dude could use Christian McCaffrey in so many different ways that can make defense's head spin. And we're talking about, you know, how complete of a team they already look like. If they got a guy like Christian McCaffrey back there, a bona fide threat in the run game and pass game, like watch out for that offense. Him and Debo together on the oh, same offense, that it. would be ridiculous. Yeah, the Bills seem to be the popular name. Bills have used two second round picks and a third round pick on running backs over the last three, four years. That would be interesting to see them go get another guy. But yeah, I think we're all waiting to see if the Panthers do indeed have that fire sale. Next one up, Cowboys backup quarterback, Cooper Rush. Now perfect 5-0 mm -hmm. when taking over for Dak Prescott. Most recently taking down the Super Bowl champs in their home building, the Rams, last week. What does it mean the Cowboys should do when Dak is healthy enough to return go with the hot hand or the more talented overall player you know what the same thing that makes you laugh makes you cry because remember when <laughs> Dak got that job he took it from Tony Romo when Romo That's got right. hurt for the 70 millionth time and mm -hmm. so Dak looked good though I, Cooper Rush has looked competent he's looked pretty good he's bald at times and it's interesting because if Dak is healthy obviously I think Dak is the more talented quarterback but there's something to be said about a guy that is just leading them to wins and that's what Cooper Rush is doing I keep waiting for the other shoe to drop like all right when is Cooper Rush going to come back down the size I think people were waiting on the other shoe to drop with Dak as well and what did Dak do he led the Cowboys to uh, the playoffs in his rookie year they had a really complimentary run game and a great offensive line that really helped him that year this year, not necessarily the same. You know, Tony Tony Pollard's running well. That defense is what you said earlier. That is really kind of pacing them. They're not asking Cooper Rush to do too much, but when he is asked to do something, he's doing it well. And I just don't think you mess with that. 
I could see if if Rush comes back down to earth and he looks like a backup quarterback that's filling in, but he hasn't looked like that. They've asked him to do some things that you just don't ask backup quarterbacks to do, and he's executed the game plan well. And when things are cooking like that, when Mike McCarthy's on the hot seat like that, I think you just do what you're doing already that's getting you wins because if you mess with it, if you mess it up, Dak comes back and he's trying to do too much, which we've seen him try to do before, even in that week one game against Tampa. Now all of a sudden you got a problem. Now all of a sudden you got a quarterback controversy and you don't want that. Just ride the hot hand until the hot hand is cold. If it's not cold until the playoffs, then that's just that just is what it is. And you think about the the quarterback situation later on. But I know Dak is the guy, but he could just be a high paid backup like Jimmy G. Let's try to sneak two more in here. He did it again. Justin Tucker kicked his 61st straight field goal in the fourth quarter or overtime Sunday to give the Ravens a come from behind win over the Bengals. And 75 straight in the second half. What does it mean when it comes to Justin Tucker cementing himself as the most clutch kicker of all time? He's him. He's he's, he's him. Himothy. He's he's him. the goat. Like I, I I don't give it to anyone else. It's funny because I have a friend who I went to uh, Mizzou with. He's a Baltimore Ravens fan. When it came time for him to kick that game winning field goal, he didn't even look at the TV. I think he had his girlfriend like filming him. How nice and is that? He, How he didn't fun. even look. He didn't look at the TV. He was like, "He's gonna make it. Game's gonna be over." And as he's saying that, Tucker's just splitting the uprights right down the middle with the game-winning kick. Like it was never even a doubt. When you put it on his foot, it's gonna go in. Like the dude is just ridiculous, and he's like a kicker nerd. I don't know if you caught his post-game. Oh interview yeah. After he yeah, he's it. just like a kicker nerd, man. Like the, the dude is him. And he's one of the best kickers that I think we've ever seen. Tucker has never missed a field goal attempt in the final minute of regulation in his career. 22 for 22 in those situations. Last one here. We got to talk about this. Bills Chiefs square off in week six in an AFC playoff rematch. Meanwhile, the Cowboys and Eagles match up in a battle for the NFC East. What does it mean when it comes to which clash is the game of the week? I think I know which way you're leaning here. Oh, it has to be this AFC matchup. Like, How good is that going to be? It's a rematch of their playoff matchup from last year, and it could be a, a precursor to the AFC championship this year, depending on how seeding works out. Like, these two teams are darn good. Patrick Mahomes, for all those people who said he wasn't going to be the same without Tyreek Hill, he's like, huh, do you know who I am? You know, he was yelling at one of the guys from the Raiders uh, the other night. He's like, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. And I'm like, ooh, we like, okay, Pat's talking cash on the sideline. Like, he's got his main dude, Travis Kelsey, threw four touchdowns to him. Like, it doesn't even matter. And then Josh Allen, those two touchdowns to Gabe Davis on Sunday were absolutely ridiculous. The 98 yarder and then the other bomb. He had 300 plus yards and four touchdowns in the first half alone on Sunday. Get out of here. Von Stop Miller it. looks like Von Miller. Like that defense looks complimentary to a explosive offense. You got Diggs. You got the emergence of Lil Cook, as I'll call him. Uh, James Cook, he scored mm -hmm. a touchdown his first of his NFL career. Dalvin was excited about that. You can check his comments out on my Twitter at Reggie Wilson TV. These two teams are ridiculous right now. And I just am so excited that we get to watch this matchup and may the best team win. And we'll see him again, I'm sure. Pat Mahomes has never been a home dog, according to Vegas, since he started back wow. in, uh, what is it, 2018, I believe. And this week, he will be for the first time. Josh Allen, the Buffalo Bills coming into town. They are three-point favorites in Arrowhead. Mahomes, by the way, number one in the league versus zone coverage when pressured end on third downs mm. the other ones wow. second in the league only to josh allen first man coverage when blitzed and when not blitz so what do you do you can't wow. blitz him can't not blitz him it's just impossible these two guys absolutely make for a very entertaining game can't wait to see that one all right that's a wrap today back tomorrow breaking down more vikes nfl and t wolves 
Remember, you got to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Join us every day for another episode with your 30 minute breakdown of everything Minnesota sports. We're a podcast to free and available all platforms. Subscribe, drop us a five star review, and find us streaming now on your Roku or Amazon Fire Stick devices. Just look out for our Locked On Sports Minnesota app there as well. That's the man, Reggie Wilson, on Twitter at Reggie Wilson TV. Check him out every night up on CARE 11. I'm Luke Inman on Twitter at Luke underscore Spinman. Special thanks to our producer, Matt DeBritz. Tune in tomorrow to Superior Sports Talk, part of Locked On Sports Minnesota. For Reggie, I'm Luke. Until tomorrow, signing out. Be blessed. Spread love today.